There are all kinds of machines and pieces of equipment at work in every factory. When we aim at production efficiency, we generally try to improve production methods by targeting zero defects and zero setup losses. But if any machines are not working properly, it will be quite impossible to improve efficiency and there will almost certainly be delivery delays as well. To avoid this situation, there is a maintenance department in charge of repair work and general overhaul. But operators should not take the attitude that maintenance is nothing to do with them and that everything can be left up to the maintenance staff. If they take that attitude, they will never be able to get rid of downtime or raise the operating rate. Of course, the most important thing is to preempt any kind of trouble in advance. The operators who use the machines and equipment every day should be the ones to do that. Hello there. Maintenance is an aspect of operator training that is not often emphasized. But as you just heard, it's a crucial element in any operator's work. All of us involved in training should always be thinking about the real meaning of maintenance and what it means to operators. And that's exactly what these videos are about. It's often said that machines are like humans. Breakdowns are like sickness, and repairs are like medical treatment. But although the operators are the ones that use the machines, they are not maintenance specialists. So what exactly is the role of the operator in maintenance? If we become sick, we are treated by a fully trained doctor. Similarly, malfunctioning machines must be repaired by maintenance specialists. However, it is possible for each of us to take steps to prevent sickness and slow down the effects of the aging process on us. Just as humans take preventive measures and have regular checkups, machines need preventive maintenance. And that is where the operators should play a major role. Let's begin by thinking about the main reasons for breakdowns. The first is general deterioration. After several years of operation, gradual deterioration is inevitable. And one small problem easily leads to another, until eventually a breakdown occurs. But in most cases, there is some kind of warning signal before there is an actual breakdown. Again, this is similar to signals our body gives us at the early stages of an illness. There are five basic stages leading up to breakdown. Stage one involves minor defects, such as worn V-belts and loose bolts. Minor maladies like these are constantly developing, and although we may not be able to see or hear them, there is considerable potential for trouble occurring as a result. Next is the stage where minor defects are actually visible. They include noise, vibration, oil leakages, oil shortage, air leakages and damaged electrical cords. In stage three, there is an unevenness in the quality of products as a result of reduced operating efficiency. In stage four, there are short stoppages while simple adjustments have to be made or repairs done.
The fifth stage is where actual breakdowns occur. The machines have to be stopped completely for lengthy periods in order to carry out repair work. Can operators detect potential problems before breakdowns occur and take action quickly enough to prevent the breakdowns occurring at all? That is what preventive maintenance is all about. Early detection and treatment is what every operator must be aiming for. Just like illnesses, breakdowns generally take time to develop. They very rarely occur out of the blue. But operators use the machines every day. So if you're an operator, you should be able to detect minor malfunctions at a very early stage. Of course, if you can do something about them yourself, you won't have to call in the maintenance people. And that means a big saving in time and energy, increased production, and ideally, zero defects and zero accidents. But to be able to do that, you have to understand your machines fully and maintain and control them properly so that they will always operate to their full ability. Now let's look at some basic points for preventive maintenance. In other words, the early detection and treatment of any minor malfunctions that could lead to breakdowns if nothing is done about them. What to do about any abnormalities you discover? You need to be fully aware of your own limits so that you can decide at once just which things you can repair yourself and which have to be reported to the maintenance specialists. In other words, be decisive. The fourth point is to be able to care for your machines properly so that they will always operate normally. This is a very important point because it increases the reliability of machines and helps to ensure full productivity. In other words, operate at full power. Of course, you can't expect to be an instant expert on all these points. They have to be learned step by step through hands-on experience. However, there is one thing that you must have right from the start, and that is the awareness that you are the one responsible for your own machine.
Step two is checking during operation. There are two ways of doing checking. One way is to stop the machines and check while cleaning is being done. The other is to do the checking during actual operation. Of course, it's not so easy to find scratches and looseness while a machine is operating. But other phenomena may become more obvious, such as sounds, vibrations, heat, and any play or distortion. Here are some of the main places where malfunctions are likely to occur and which require very thorough checking. Lubrication points. Nuts, bolts, etc. Contact points for belts and shafts. Parts using oil and air pressure, such as cylinders. Electrical wiring and switches. For checking during operation, you need to use the four senses of sight, hearing, smell and touch. For example, if you're checking driving parts, you can see any dirt or grease. You can hear abnormal sounds. And you can quickly pick up abnormal smells. Although you can check for vibration and heat with your hand in some cases, great care must be taken about touching machines during operation because of the mechanical and electrical dangers involved. In order to improve the effects of checking during operation, you have to be able to sense whether operating conditions are normal or not. This ability is gained from actual experience and a good general knowledge of the operation of a machine, its structure and its functions. In the same way, you can immediately sense if something is wrong with your own car. When you sense something is strange, such as a change in rhythm or sound, or something like that, you must check at once to see whether in fact something is abnormal. This sensitivity can only be developed over time with a lot of training and an attentive frame of mind. So far, we've seen how to detect abnormalities at an early stage through cleaning and checking. Now let's look at some preventive measures that should be part of your daily routine. Step three is lubrication. About 60% of the breakdowns which happen to moving parts are the result of improper lubrication. If there's not enough oil, you may get bite and overheating. If there's too much oil, you may get leakages, which can cause electrical shorts. In order to avoid abnormalities and breakdowns in advance, it's essential to implement regular lubrication. In other words, the right amount of the right oil at the right time and in the right way. The four questions to be asked about checking and treatment are 1. Is lubrication being carried out regularly? 2. Are standards maintained for quantity, temperature, etc.? Three, are there any oil leakages? Four, are there any abnormalities, such as oil discoloration or impurity? To fully complete checking and treatment of malfunctions, visual control should be introduced. For example, lubrication instruction labels, lubrication standard sheets, lubrication limit indicators, and so on. It's important that you can determine the type and amount of oil at a glance. The fourth step is proper tightening. Nuts and bolts which are loose or missing can cause vibration or tilting of equipment and result in defective products and breakdowns. But over tightening of adjustment bolts can also create problems. In some cases it can prevent the machine working altogether. It's necessary to fully understand both the purpose of the bolts and the degree of tightening required. Visual control is again necessary. For example, the creation of checking and treatment standard sheets and use of alignment marks. Operators use machines and pieces of equipment every day. 
The purpose of these machines is to produce perfect products and increase productivity. To ensure that, you must remember three fundamental points. Reliability is vital. We want to avoid breakdowns and deterioration of equipment. Checking and repairing should be made as easy as possible to avoid waste of time and manpower. The cost of maintenance should be made as low as possible and accidents totally avoided. By grasping these points and acting on them, you can become a truly proficient operator. You will then be able to use your ability to the fullest. And so will your machines and equipment. Well then, in volume two, we'll be looking in more detail at techniques for checking basic machines and equipment. See you there.